Hello everyone, Hadi Fembridge here again, and here we're going to have a quick start and continue from where we left off in the last episode. So back on our sprint here, in our last episode, we created the account flow. So we also created a script to allow us kind of update the existing accounts with the new account numbers we've um, generated. So however, where we left off is that we updated the create account flow, which we have this. And one major issue here is that we have to do this every time. So after creating an account, we try to generate an account number. And the issue here is that if we are unable to generate the account number, then the existing account should as well also go away because the flow wasn't complete. And the old terminology about the flow not being complete is a concept of um, database management and SQL in general. It's a concept of transaction. So naturally, we weren't even done with this. Okay. And also we should return here so that we don't get to the last one. You will get the OG. So this is like a mess. This is not the best way to do it. For instance, uh, we deleted the account here. Also, if there was an issue updating the account, then we should also still delete the account if you understand what that means. But this wasn't complete. So in general, we want to backtrack. We want to reinvent, not reinvent the way. We want to do it the right way, actually, by using transaction. And we've used transaction in the past, if you have been following. And I can come back to my SQLC. So the store, this is the old definition of the transaction in itself. And we did a transaction that grow. We kind of create um, a high level function to kind of undo our transaction process itself. So we could decide to also do the same thing for account creation here, but I don't think I want to go through that um, optimization route. So instead, I will update the store. I will change this to a capital letter. So that way we can access this from outside uh, the package. So come back here, we update this as well. Okay. So take a look at this. This is the store. The exact TS or exact TS is attached to the stuff. And where can we get the stuff from? So if we come back to our server, we will see that the server has access to the queries, which is linked to the stuff. So that means exact TS is coming from the stuff. So with that noted, we can come back to our account where we want to operate. And yep, I think here is where we want to start the whole operation. Okay. I don't think I'm missing anything. Not at all. So based on that, I can decide to just maybe comment all this out. So HTTP status created, we need account at the end of the day. So since we need account at the end of the day, and if you take note of a transaction, the only thing we return from a transaction is an error. So based on that, I can create a variable to represent my account from the beginning. So I can have the account, which is going to be DB account by definition. So at the end of the day, we're going to have an account or probably an error returned. So yeah, with that done also, we want to make a definition for our transaction. So we have error which is going to be equals to this. So remember, we've defined error here already. So we have error here, so we don't have to redefine it here. So this is going to be a into server.queries.exec.tx. So this takes in this, takes in the um, DB queries. So we have access to the queries from there. And yeah, we can close it up like that. So here we can come here. The first thing we want to do is to create um, the account. So technically we can copy this both in. So let's copy this and uncomment it from here. We have a um, new error here, kind of different from the one we have here. I don't even know, but I don't think it matters anyway. So we have account declared, but never used. Yeah, we shouldn't be declaring it. So let's make it equals to, so we are referencing the account we have outside here. So if error is not new, let's try to format this well. I don't know if I could format, I'm not sure if I set anything, but 
yeah pardon let's just ignore that for now so we have return it has to return an error so here we're going to return fmt dot error f we already have an account with this currency there we can remove this then else we can just return the error itself so return error like that and we've balanced the situation for this so actually i think this is for this then this is for this so this should be the best structure yeah we have a final missing yep yeah because if error is not new then we can still proceed so next we can i think we are done with this part so we can remove it so the next one is the account number so let's Comment it or comment it rather and bring it in here. So after creating our accounts, we want to generate the account number. And now this can be easier. This can be shrinked. We can remove all that. So if there is an error, then we can return the error like that. And now we have access to the account number. As you can see, it's getting cleaner, which is what we want. So again, we will uncomment this. We will get this and place it here. Oh, okay, let's remove this. So I'll paste this here. So now we want to update our account. So we have all these. So in case there's an error with the update, again, we return that error. And finally, if everything goes well, we will return new like that. So yeah, this is better as you can see, it's much more cleaner and we still perform the same operation in a better way. So now we can uncomment this and revert back to how things are meant to be. Error is not new, then we return the error. So based on the way we format it, we could get the expected error we want. So this is what I want. This makes more sense. And I think that's all we want to do on the back end. So let's run the server. Okay, it looks like he's complaining here. Oh, okay, so this is more like a semantic kind of situation. Should not end with a punctuation or new line. Well, I'm not sure where the new line is coming from. Quick fix. Yeah, let's ignore that. I don't think that should be an issue anyway. Okay, after saving, actually, that went off. So I think the punctuation mark, the full stop we had um, at the back was the issue and that has been resolved. So now let's start the server. So yeah, bro. Let's confirm what we used to start the server. I think I can remember. So we have this make starts. So we have make starts. All right. So it looks like the server is running. I'm not sure. Not really sure. But yeah, the assumption is that the server is running. And as a result of that, we can close the backend. We can open our fingered bytes. And let's open it with VS Code as usual. Let's zoom in some more. Yeah, and then we run the server. Okay, an error occurred. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Let's come back to our browser. Let's pull up our network and see what we have. Network tab, refresh. So let's just make use of the text. Okay, so it looks like the server is not running at all. I don't know why it's not running. It looks okay here. Oh, yeah, it's not okay. Because if it was running, then it should show the list of, uh, yeah, no matter. Oh, I see. Sorry about that. 
So the issue is because we've now reverted this back to how it used to be. So we move that. We do this. Then, yeah, I think we need access to the API location. So let's import this. Yep, I will try and move this as well. Okay, so let's restart the server. Okay, so this is what we expected and this is how it should be. So let's run this, refresh. Okay, we have what we need, that's okay. So let's log in. Well, we've not implemented Remember Me anyways, but that's just for aesthetics. So we have our accounts and now the difference between this and what we used to have is we now have access to an account number and we should be able to easily render it here. So let me pull this aspect up. Let me try to zoom in, come down to network, refresh this page. So we have the accounts and as you can see, we have the account number which is not really coming in in the best mode. Yeah, we could format it the way we want. I think we've done this in the past, but uh, I don't want to waste too much time on this. So probably in the next episode, we could start with that. But for now, let's just render it. It's an object. We are working with JavaScript, so I'm sure we can easily render it. So we'll come back to the front end. So coming here. Yeah, this is the front end. Let's see our types. So do we have an account type? Yeah, as you can see, we don't have it from here, but we have the account card. Mm, doesn't look like I can see an account card from here as well. So oh, we're entering our account. So let's find it. We have accounts. So it gets account completion, that's content. So let's see what that content is. So we actually have an account card. Where did we define it? Oh, okay. So here is the account card. So we have the amount, we have the currency. We also need the account number. Like this optional string. Well, maybe technically, but not really. It should be defined because it's going to, based on the way we've created the account, it's going to be a requirement. So under the currency, I'm going to have a small tag here, a small tag, and render the props dot account number like that. So let's save this and come back to our browser. Let's refresh. Well, I can't see anything. Not sure what that is, but as you can see here, obviously, yeah obviously because account number is having a very funny structure. So yeah, we are going to fix that in the start of the next episode, just before we do other things. So let's quickly structure this well. So account number is not a string, actually still has a string object, which is now a string. Well, as you can see, this is completely not what we want, but we still have to access a string. Okay, with that done, it seems we have an error. Yep, account type. Okay, so let's copy the same thing. Yeah, totally, this needs to be optimized. So copy the same thing, put it here. Okay, I, did. I don't think I copied it. So funny enough, the this there shouldn't be an account card type. All we should have is should be an account. Account type should be adequate. So we can get everything we need from it. So we have the balance, we have the currency. Yeah, account card type is not necessary. So this interface should be referencing the account type. Like that. We still have all the information we need anyways. So balance. I'll call this balance like that. And this is going to be balance. I don't know why it's complaining though. 
So string is not, yeah. So let's remove this. Yeah, I can add one more information here. Yeah, I can have an amount, which is going to be a string. Yep. And this is going to be optional because it's not always going to be available. So as a result of that, I can have an amount back here. And to fix seems to be a string, but just to be sure, we have to string again. And this can be an amount. Yeah, so it's expecting it to always be defined, so we can just say or oh, zero. Okay, so that's that. So because we have a lot of required field, we still need to pass other information. So you probably I'll just say the rest. Yeah, like this. Currency is still completely. Yeah, more than once, obviously. So let's move it up so that we can't specify it more than once. So currency is going to be obtained from the account. Yep. So amount has to be converted. That's why we are doing that. Probably not. I think the old balance stuff should be able to do it. But let's leave it like that. Let's not bother ourselves too much. So now if we come back to the account card, we should have access to the account number and string. So yeah, we've done that. Let's take a look at our browser. Yeah, this is the account number. So we want to drop it down and format it a little bit different. So let's do that. So here we can have PR. Then here we can have class name and tests is going to be maybe base, let's see base, and font is going to be semi-bold. Okay, let's see how this looks. All right, so here is our account number looking all good. So guys, there we have it, and this is where we're going to be running off um, in this episode, so let's not make it too long. So in the next one, we are going to start implementing our intra-bank um, transfer. Because now we have account, which means we can easily reach out to another account to send money to it. And also we are going to clean up the way the account number is being represented. We still kind of have to format it on the back end. So yeah, see you in the next episode and bye for now.